gospel to the sick person is that you don't have to be sick the gospel to the sinner is that you don't have to be in sin is this good news you don't have to be in sin anymore the gospel to the poor person is that he doesn't have to be in poverty anymore why aren't you preaching this Say this message is, right. is for me. Is for me. You know, because you're all gonna go, oh, it's for you. Right? We all do that. I do that. I'm sitting there listening, I go, oh, you should listen to this. No, I should listen to it. This message is for me. I don't know if you found this out, but I've learned my best messages come when I'm preaching to me, the choir. Come on. Say, I'm the choir. I want to hear this message. I want to hear this message. Well, you're going to hear it then. Today, I'm going to speak about money. Hey. So before you shut me off, listen. Are you here? Yeah. A lot of people, because they're, they're like, oh, you're going to preach about money. He's going to dig up an offering. Eh. So I said, God, I don't want to speak on that. And you know what he says? Did I ask you what you wanted to speak on? Yes. <laughs> Not our choice. We don't get to choose. In fact, if we do try to choose, man, it's difficult. Yeah. You ever try to make a message that you wanted to preach on? Forget about it. Don't ever do that again. If he starts leading you in a direction, just go that way. Come on. Are you here? here. No, Bobby knows. I mean, they're trying to scribble out my cat scratch last minute before I came in here. Say money. money. Now I assure you I have a lot more to say on the other topic that I preached on yesterday. On how the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. Yes. Right? Yes. And how we walk with him. I have a lot to say on that. I've been preaching that message for over 10 years. So you can imagine. But this is not out of line with the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today. today. You know, he is God in the earth today. Amen. And do you know that he is a very, very, very wealthy God? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. And we treat it like that doesn't mean anything to him. Hey, it must mean something to him. He's the wealthiest being that ever existed. So if you didn't hear the message yesterday, see if you can get the tapes. See, I see you know how old I am when I say tapes. You remember? Remember recording tapes and mailing amounts of evil? I still say tapes. Deal with it. Are you ready? You're going to write this down, right? Yes. You make advancements by paying prices. Get that straight. You don't pay the price, you don't get the advancement. Amen. I want the advancement. I'm entitled to some kind of advancement. No, you're not, especially in the kingdom of God. Hello? You make advancements by paying prices. Prices of what, you say? Prices of obedience and being faithful. You want to make advancements? Say, I want to make advancements. I want to make advancements. Then say, I must pay prices. I must pay prices. Is it true? And especially prices of obedience. The more obedient you are, the more obedient, especially what I'm going to talk about today, what, the more obedient that you say what God told you to say, the way he told you to say it, and I mean the way he told you to say it. If he told you to say it with force, then say it with force. Amen. Otherwise, we get lectured on the way home. Why didn't you say what I told you to say? I don't think I'll advance you today. Did you write it down? You make advances, advancements by paying prices. So years ago, say years ago, years ago. I made the decision. I made the decision. <laughs> okay, now I'm talking about me. I made the decision. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this in a different language. It'd be like the interpreter. 
it's like you don't speak English well we will <laughs> interpret it for you <laughs> years ago I made the decision that I was going to say exactly what the Holy Ghost told me to say in the way he told me to say it regardless of who was there looking at me with a sour face and I've seen them all and I've been down this road a hundred times but I'm faithful and he knows it you know a lot of people don't want to hear the truth you know a lot of people don't want to hear about money you know how many people have left the church because you mentioned money and you're not mentioning money so you can take it from them that's not the point you're mentioning money because God wants to get some to them say God wants, God wants to get some, get some to, me. to me what you believe about money is how it will respond to you if you say and think and believe that money is evil it will depart from you right you want evil things to depart from you right yeah. and you know the church is ingrained in that belief this will be fun relax if you think and believe and speak about money that money comes from God to you it will come to you if you say and think and believe that money comes from God then it will come to you are you here it's, that's, it's not difficult money always comes to me say it money always comes to me say it again money always comes to me why does money come to you because I say money always comes to me it's the number one key in principle in believing God for money have you heard of this believing God for money do you know that 98% of the prayers that God if you could listen in on God's headpiece but if you could 98% would be about money and we got a lot of scriptures to talk about God providing all your needs according to God provides all your needs according to his riches you don't need money put money in there God provides all money according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus right does he or is that a fake verse is that one of the fake verses there are no fake verses if you say that money doesn't come to you what are you gonna have money not coming to you why because somehow you believe that money is evil the root of money is evil the Bible says the root of <laughs> no you're wrong it says the love of money yeah. is the root of evil yeah. you don't love money you love God but you need money yes. right and the more money you have the better you can serve God what if I wanted to give you a thousand dollars right now and I didn't have it then I couldn't do what I felt God was telling me to do right yeah. you're like really do it do it <laughs> Luke 638 did you find it all right first of all what color are these letters red. if you have a red letter edition what does that mean Jesus, Jesus. have you heard of him yes. okay I'm not saying it I'm just going to repeat what Jesus said Amen. give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down Hallelujah. shaken together running over shall man give into your bosom for with the same measure you meet it will be measured unto you yes. Jesus said it it must be true the fact is every single ministry and minister needs money yeah. if your ministry is going to thrive am I wrong I'm speaking to ministers here am I not maybe I forgot where I was 
I'm not telling you that you need to drive a golden Cadillac unless that's what you want do people even drive golden Cadillacs anymore I don't know but you need money you need money money helps fuel what you needs to do yes. every minister needs money was Jesus I'm keeping it simple man he keeps it so simple yeah. was Jesus in the ministry yes. Yes. I mean, we base our ministry on his Jesus was in the ministry are you ready to look at this yeah. we're in Luke go to Luke chapter 4 we read this yesterday Luke chapter 4 and verse 17 remember this the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach, preach. Yes. Spirit Lord came on Jesus and anointed him to first preach Jesus was first a preacher Amen. this is the first thing he said it was his first message you want the first message Jesus preached it's right here it's recorded Spirit of the Lord's on me. He's anointed me to be a preacher, basically, right? Right? Yeah. So Jesus was first a preacher. Yeah. Am I going too fast? No. You've accepted that. Yeah. Have you accepted that Jesus was a preacher? He was the first preacher, and any preacher that came after Jesus the preacher was a preacher. Let's read on in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What's the gospel to the poor? Did they die and go to heaven where they won't be no poor anymore? Is that what it is? Let me ask you a question. What's the gospel to the sick person? The good news. What's the good news to the sick person? you can be healed that's yes. good news they didn't know about it you told them the good news they can be healed then you get them healed yes. gospel to a sick person right Amen. what's the gospel to a person in sin you freedom you don't have to be in sin anymore yes. right sick person not in sickness anymore sinful person not in sin anymore poor person not, not in poor. poverty anymore not poor anymore all right Amen. we're good Jesus preached the gospel to the poor where in the list of categories was this when the Spirit of the Lord came on Jesus first how could that be when we keep it last if ever are you here How many of you even wake up in the morning and think I have to preach the gospel that God wants to make people take people out of poverty and make them rich I have scriptures for it the blessing of the Lord makes you rich Amen. is receiving the gospel a blessing yes. it will make you rich and I'm not saying rich you die and go to heaven rich obviously but at that point you're dead so don't get mad at me when I literally say hey you wonder hey I'm just telling you what I have to tell you Amen. you see I get paid when I'm faithful to say what I'm told to say and nobody pays me no man pays me say no man pays me, no man pays me. the Holy Ghost pays me the Holy Ghost pays me when I'm faithful to do what he tells me yes. to do right Amen. so deal with it are you ready for this? Yes. You get ready to write this down? Yes. You must preach this gospel. You must preach this gospel. I, I'll, I'll leave it at the end or somewhere else. You must preach this. I'm just telling you, receive it or not. Like I said, I'm, I'm going today and you don't even have to like me now. But I have to tell you, you must preach this gospel. Get it straight. I don't want to preach this gospel. I don't like the association of this gospel. Oh, you don't like it to be associated with Jesus. Oh, 
Okay. It's not going to work out for you. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they believe unless you gave them the words to believe? What? Me giving them words to believe that will cause them to be blessed and come out of poverty? People, the majority of the world and prayers that are out there are about how do I get out of this financial situation? Are you here? Have you prayed this prayer? Have you? I have. What's the answer? The gospel. You have the answer, but you don't, you don't want to touch it because you might be associated with a wealthy preacher. Well, I'll get used to it. Jesus was a wealthy preacher. The Holy Ghost is a wealthy God. You don't want to be associated with the Holy Ghost, who's a wealthy God. Our religious traditions have twisted it so much that we can't see him for who he is. You must preach this gospel. Did I say it strong enough? If I could, I would get on your table and shout right down on you. You must preach this gospel. You must preach this gospel. Like one of those, you ever see those lawn sprayers? You must preach this gospel. Say it. I must preach this gospel. Jesus preached this gospel to the poor, and it was that he didn't have to be poor anymore. Say, I don't have to be poor anymore. I don't have to be poor anymore. Well, where'd you get that crazy idea? Gospel. Go who wrote the gospel? Well, Jesus said it here, but the Holy Ghost inspired men. Are you here? Amen. Why would he say that? Why would he put it first? It must be important. You don't put first things first if it's not important. <sighs> Did Je So Jesus was a preacher, right? Did Jesus give to the poor according to Luke chapter 6, verse 38? Was he just saying that? Is that what Jesus does? He just said things and said, do as I say, but not as I do? He told people to give, and it would be given to them, good measure, pressed down. He must have done this. He must be speaking from experience. Are you here? Amen. Did Jesus believe this? Yes. Did Jesus do what he said he did? Yes. The Bible says that Jesus went around about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You remember that? It's in Acts. Won't have you look there, but he went about doing good. If you look up the words, went about doing good, it's where we get the word philanthropy from. So he went around being a philanthropist. What does a philanthropist do? Giving. Yeah. Giving. He was known for his giving and healing. What did it say first? The giving and healing. Giving and healing. All right. John chapter 13, verse 26. And then said Jesus unto him, What thou doest, do quickly. So Jesus said to... Uh, Judas there, whatever you're going to do, go do quickly. Now look what happened. Verse 28. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag, meaning he carried the money, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Why would they assume that Jesus would be telling Judas to go give something to the poor. They just assumed it. Because he did it all the time. Say, he did it all the time. He went about doing it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and then let's look at verse 9. Did you know I was going there? Remember, Jesus preached the gospel. The gospel to the sick person is that you don't have to be sick. The gospel to the sinner is that you don't have to be in sin. Is this good news? You don't have to be in sin anymore. The gospel to the poor person is that he doesn't have to be in poverty anymore. Why aren't you preaching this? 
Did I say that strong enough? Yeah. Did I need to say it again? Well, we don't like you if you say it stronger. I probably will, so just put the seat belt on. Let's read this, right? 2 Corinthians 8, 9, thank you. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Yes. By grace you are saved, yes. right? By grace you are healed, yes. right? You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, let's run around the room. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich that's a gospel in a nutshell right there he bore poverty did jesus bear sickness yes why so, we could so you could be healed did jesus bear sins yes why so we could be sinless so you can be sinless, you can be righteous, right? Yes. And walk without sin. Did Jesus bear poverty? Yes. Why? So I could be rich. So you could be rich. Amen. Get it straight or rip it out of your Bible and go somewhere else. People love it when I come to the church and tell them that. It's the first thing Jesus preached. And we've just kind of shrouded it in religious garbage. Say religious garbage until it meant nothing I don't know does it mean anything to you to have your bills paid Amen. maybe it doesn't and eh, they call they make these calls they leave it on the phone an extended warranty I think it is I don't know it matters to me that my bills are paid Amen. do you think it matters to the person on the street that his bills are paid how many of you would go up to them and present them the gospel Jesus did the first thing he said to them and you know what he also did most of the time I bet most of the time he gave them something he not only told them something he gave them something yes. Amen. why because he lived Luke 6 38 I live Luke 6 38 and my partners people that support me in the ministry can expect that I live Luke 6 38 and they can expect listen they can expect Luke 6 38 to work in their life it's part of my responsibility to not only preach it but believe it I believe it I believe it yeah. say I believe it I believe it Oh, you're one of those. Yes, I'm one of those. I believe this. I do it. I live it. It works for me. God is not a liar. Amen. Amen. One of these days, this is going to get a hold of you. You will never, I'm telling you, you'll never be the same. I'm not just coming here to share some stupid little sermon with you. I hate stupid little sermons. How can you be a preacher and hate stupid little sermons? Have you ever preached a stupid little sermon? I hate those things. Doesn't do good, anybody any good, does it? You need to get right down, and when you find the root of a problem, put your finger on it and poke it. And then poke it again. And if their face is still a little sour, poke it one more time. And if they don't leave, you got something right that's how you do it yeah. so there's a grace to be rich there's, if there is a, let me just say that I'll put it this way so you can you can palette it is there a grace to be rich where does that grace come from it comes from God comes from his Bible it comes from the gospel are you here Amen. Well, I don't know about that come on there's a grace to I just read you a scripture oh you tore it out there's a grace to be rich can you walk in a grace to one degree or another 
can you get better at walking in the grace? Yes. Yes. Can you, I like to take healing for, exa for example. I don't get sick. I haven't been sick in close to 20 years because I've learned the grace to not get sick. I just don't receive it. Oh, you mean you've never sneezed? Oh, no, I sneeze. I sneeze big. <laughs> But if I sneeze and I feel something's coming on me, it's trying to come on me, I resist. Yeah. I resist the devil and he flees from me. I say, it is written, devil. By Jesus' stripes I was healed. Sickness cannot stay in my body. And if it persists and really tries to give me the old wham-bam, I'll, I'll work out on that thing for an hour. I tell people this, they probably think I'm weird, but I'll go and I'll... I'll sit in a bathtub with some nice hot water in it because I know nobody's going to bother me in there. <clears throat> I'm all by myself. And I will say God's word concerning healing because he sent his word and it healed me and delivered me. I'll say it. By Jesus' stripes I was healed. Sickness cannot stay in my body. By Jesus' stripes I was healed. Sickness cannot stay in my body. By Jesus' stripes I was healed. Sickness cannot stay in my body. And at some point in that, I'll keep doing it. All of a sudden, I know I've got it. Yes. Whether I feel any different or not, I know I have it. I worked that grace until it works for me, right? Yeah. What about this grace? Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running. You got to work it. You have to work it. First, you have to do the give, but then there's some work to get it yes. to produce for you. Listen, am I shouting too much? Sometimes if you yell too much, they stop listening. I'll talk softer. Listen, you have to get this working for you. If you want to fulfill what God's got you to fulfill, does God have anything for you to fulfill? Yes. You must get this grace working for you. Amen. One of the ways we have an advantage here as preachers, we can preach it. We must preach this message, right? Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So we know Jesus preached it. We know Jesus gave to the poor. We know that we are responsible to do these things for ourselves. Let's read it again. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. The first word is give, and it, the thing you gave, shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom with the same measure you meet. It shall be measured unto you. You think I've ever said that before? I say it a lot why would I say that a lot because I do it and I'm working the grace if you don't work the grace it don't work for you hey and I know I realize I've been I've been around for a while I'm older than you think I am I've been in the ministry longer than you think I have I've been where I didn't work it, and I've been where I did work it, and I'm telling you, working it's better. Amen. I wrestled for a while thinking about, you know, the prosperity preachers. They preach prosperity. I mean, that's actually a good thing to say about somebody. Jesus was a prosperity preacher. He preached prosperity to the poor. They didn't have to be poor anymore. What is that? Prosperity. And they irritated me just like they irritate you and probably I'm irritating you right now because I know deep in my heart I love God did I say that you don't love God I know you love God and I love God and you know these those worldly things just don't seem very important to me could you help me with some money could you <laughs> could you <laughs> they're not important to me you are a liar first of all it is important yeah. it's very important if it's important to you it's important to god it then it's certainly important to god the holy ghost who has to live in you Come on. Come on. Right. you stinky beast you <laughs> make a lot of friends saying that are you here yeah. who's living in you 
sad poor God sad shriveled up poor God Almighty God ruler of kingdom God what's that make you I'm second ruler in the kingdom at least my kingdom you must preach this gospel Jesus preached it he was a preacher did Jesus receive offerings here we go you ready I was borderline whether I liked you or not but now I'm pretty sure this is gonna be it <laughs> right did Jesus receive offerings he was a preacher that's like saying you know a duck doesn't have a bill did the preacher receive? <laughs> did the preacher receive an offer are you preachers here yes. do you want to be like Jesus yes. to a point like this I've, I somebody told me that doing this so you, this could be a lesson to you preachers Amen. don't point people because worldwide this is one of the most offensive things you could do and I'm like I've been doing that my whole life <laughs> I offend everybody <laughs> they said do this you got so you did learn something you must preach this gospel oh, did Jesus receive an offering did he let's read it you okay with the Bible yes. I don't know a couple of those other scriptures you're like <laughs> yeah. let's go to Luke 6 are you like how I'm keeping this in Luke uh, Luke 8 all right you there Luke 8 verse 1 and it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village where'd he go every city and village preaching what did he do preaching. what was Jesus he was the ultimate preacher wasn't he yes. and you say you're a preacher then we're gonna be like him yep. preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom oh wait who ha who what he preached that you shouldn't be poor anymore he was not going around like the poor Jesus the world tried to sell us on he had no place to lay his head because there wasn't any hotels open at the time and that evening he went and stayed in Zacchaeus's house who was the wealthiest man in town and the 12 were with him and verse 2 and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils and Joanna the wife of Chusa Herod's steward who was who was Herod Herod was the king arguably the wealthiest person in town she was the wife of the wealthiest persons in town steward meaning he had the money where did she get the money from Jesus wife give me some money are you here maybe you don't like this message I don't know I have to preach it Joanna the wife of Jews Herod steward and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance they gave him money Jesus was a preacher Jesus took up offerings he took the offerings are you here I didn't say he went out in the crowd and said do you anybody have a thousand dollars who give me a thousand dollars who bid me a thousand dollars like an auctioneer I didn't say that why would he do that he's already said given it shall be given unto you good measure he yeah. believes it he does it he lives it this works for him say this works for me, this works for me. now I really want you to get this this is the revelation I'm trying to get across you ever try to get a revelation across and you like flip it back and forth and beat on it for a while who said Luke 638 are you here you ready who told Jesus to say look Luke 638 Holy, Holy Ghost same God in the earth today same one we walk around with right we in fact we walk around in Jesus name with the Holy Ghost very similar <laughs> Jesus the preacher in his message as a pre are you still here yes. Jesus as a preacher said Luke 638 
by the Holy Ghost telling him to say it as a preacher Jesus said to give what if I hold up my pious hand and say give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together running over what if I said that what would you think of me oh you're one of those well, I won't say it that way even though I did who told Jesus to say that you just said the same Holy Ghost told you to, was he gonna tell you to say something different it's the same today you say say I say, I say. Give. give and it shall be, it shall be. Given, unto given unto you good measure, good measure. Press, down, press down shaken together, shaken together. Running, over, running over shall men, shall men give into your bosom you as a preacher are required to say that if you don't say it they can't believe it they can't act on it and the and the, the whole thing just stops are you here yeah. did you get that yeah. is the Holy Ghost the same Holy Ghost today yes. is the word the same today yes. he told Jesus to say it he's telling us to say it Amen. now it does work Amen. now listen I the other day I was going down I do this every month I send out you wouldn't believe how much money I send out to ministries if I told you you'd be you probably think oh my send me some maybe I will <laughs> probably will so it, you know at the beginning of the month I write out all my checks I still like to write checks you've heard of those yeah. paper checks so I can hold it in my hand and I like to walk out to the front of my driveway in the mailbox I get to the mailbox and I lift up the little flag thing on the side you've heard of this yeah. and then I put my my checks in there and then I shut it right and then the mailman comes along I don't know what they do I don't think anyone knows what they do it's like making sausage just leave it alone So I'm walking down the driveway and I pray as we do over our offerings oh God bless me bless these offerings bless these people bless the bless please blah blah you must get tired of hearing me sometimes I bet anyway so I'm holding these and I'm walking down I'm about ready to put them in the mailbox and the Holy Ghost said to me don't ever listen don't ever pray over your offerings again say Luke 638 what do I say so I'm like oh ouch 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 could you be a little more nice when you say it right <laughs> now what do I do when I put my offerings and I didn't stop giving the offerings I say I give and it's given unto me good measure pressed down shaken together running over men giving to my bosom Holy Ghost told me to say it Amen. same Holy Ghost told Jesus to say it Amen. same Holy Ghost isn't gonna tell you anything different Amen. did he tell, tell Jesus to say it he did. did Jesus say it yes. you want to be like Jesus yes. yeah so say it Amen. preach this gospel of the kingdom which includes prosperity and say it and as a minister you're required to say if it's given to you it will be given to them and you know I take a lot of time praying over my partners and their money and their offerings because I believe this and I take it seriously this is serious business say it this is serious business people are dependent on this offerings come in you throw them on the bed and you roll around I don't think so <laughs> it's serious business they're believing this I'm believing this how are they believing it they wouldn't be believing it if I didn't preach it no. do you believe it do you preach it no. all right you having fun yet no. I wanted more of a feel-good sermon it's the only one I got you invited me back. <laughs> Amen. 
I'll say it again, you must preach this gospel. If you're going to preach this gospel, you must know this gospel and believe this gospel. Do you believe other parts of the gospel like it's literally every part of your fiber of your being? All I have to do is like bump into you and it just comes out? What's that mean? You believe it. And it's working for you. This was the first thing. This is part of the gospel. You got to get over some hurdles here. And I know it takes some time. Like I was trying to probably never even finish that story before. It's really kind of bothered me when anybody talked about money. Why? Because I didn't have this in me. I didn't have this part of the gospel in me. It was never preached to me by any of you. Was that fun? <laughs> How's it going to get in them? We have to preach it. We, we have to give it to them. Yeah. Give it to them, brother. <laughs> <sighs> so Jesus received offerings. We see that Jesus was a giver. He was known for giving. giving. And Jesus lived and preached Luke 6.38. Did I get you that far? That's really all I'm trying to get across this morning. Did, Le yes. Did Jesus live and preach Luke yes. 6.38? Yes. Then what's your problem? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Now think about this. Think, think about this. Jesus, as a preacher, took up an offering and said this. If you give, it'll be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shake. Who, who better to give to than Jesus or God's servants? When I see a servant of God and they're doing good, give to them. Don't miss an opportunity. And I'm not telling you to give me anything. I'm not, honestly, did any of you think that? I was trying, some, some people think that. I'm going, he's going to take up an offering. He's winding it up. He's winding it up. He's going to do it. Hey, I don't need anything because I give and it's given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, giving to my bosom. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich, adds no sorrow with it. God gives me power to get wealth. The living God gives me richly all things to enjoy. You can't poke me without one of these verses coming out. Amen. And I preach it and I live it and I enjoy giving more than anything else that I think I can think of the bigger the check the happier I am until I walk back in the house and I go what did you just do your bank account was here now it's down here you know but I was I was mumbling about you know we mumble I was mumbling about that the other day to God, and he says, you know, that money is still yours. It's just in a different location yeah. doing something different. Amen. Amen. It's in your account. Yes. All that money I gave is still in my account. It's just in a better account, yeah. and he's going to reward me openly yes. if I hold fast the profession of my faith. Yeah. What's the profession of my faith? That I give, and it's given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, do men give into my bosom. With the same measure you meet. You measure in hundreds, what are you going to meet? What's coming back? Hundreds. I measure in thousands, what's coming back? Thousands. I measure in 10,000, what comes back? 10,000. You know what's great when you get up into those higher numbers is the letters you receive from the people you sent them to. They're like, oh, we, we really needed this. <laughs> right? Yeah. Amen. Change lives. Changes lives. Glory to God. <sighs> so are you getting anything out of this? Yeah. About Ray, wrap it up. Jesus believed it. Jesus said it. Jesus did it. And we are responsible to not only preach this, but live it. Amen. It's much more effective if you stand in healing and health and youth renewal and preach it. Because you believe it. 
and the belief that's in your words comes over to them are you here mm. yes. what about this verse of scripture given it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down chain do you believe it yes. do you practice it yes. and it doesn't end just when you sow the seed you have to continue to hold fast the profession of your faith Amen. until it comes to pass yes. right Hebrews says let us hold fast the profession what's profession what you say hold fast to what you say it doesn't look like it it never looks like it when you first pray for somebody for healing it looks like nothing happened what are you gonna do hold fast when you give a seed it looks like nothing's happening some of the bigger seeds are still in the ground they take a while Listen, all of those seeds, all of them that you sowed in the past are going to come yes. to fruition. They're producing now. Yes. You might not see it now, but they're coming to pass if you hold fast to the profession of your faith. If you don't, I feel bad. Are you here? I think I'm about done. The profession is also your profession you profess to be a preacher you profess to be in the ministry this is part of what you're called to preach this is a big part of what people need to hear from you are you here it could be the most important thing they need to hear from you and they should see it in you they should recognize it in you Amen. you still here yes. is that any good yes. did you get anything out of it yes. are you going to do it yes. so you have to embrace this message just like you've embraced every other message Amen. and I know there's a lot of preachers out there you don't like me too <laughs> so don't listen to them but this is scripture it has nothing to do with them this is what Jesus did and said and if you say it you're in agreement with Jesus you're in agreement with the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today and we walk with him in this by saying his words are you here all right lift your hand let me pray for you Holy Ghost, I thank you. You are God in the earth today. You see every one of these hands. You see the ability that you are able to put in each one of these hands. And thus says the Spirit, Lord. Those hands shall become full. Those hands shall become fuller as you begin to speak my words. For my words do not return to me void, and I am the one in you. Therefore, they won't return to you void. My words out your mouth make these things a reality in your life. So hold fast to the profession of my faith, and you shall begin to live in the abundance that I created you to live in enjoy it the living god gives us richly all things to enjoy we thank you holy ghost in jesus name amen